and I had a great idea. <laughs> In the middle of Epcot, let's go pray for the blind man. Because that's how I enjoy my life. So I woke up to him. And obviously he is evidently blind. So I said to the lady, excuse me, um, I'm a Christian. I believe in the power of God. Can I pray for your father? And she said, that's my husband. <laughs> Let me give you some good advice. <laughs> if you want to do something for God, don't start off the way I did. <laughs> we're starting at a real deficit here if we're going to see a miracle. Not only now do they not like God, they don't like me. I said, I'm so sorry. Can I pray for your husband? And I thought she was going to flat out say no. She said, if you have to. I said, well, as a matter of fact, I do have to. So this is great. So in the middle of Disney World, I lay my hand on these guys. Now, newsflash, laying your hand on a blind man's eyes creates a crowd. If you want to build a crowd, lay your hands on a blind man at Disney World, you will soon have a crowd. But I have no option because Jesus told me, lay hands on the sick. So I laid my hands on him and I said, blind eyes, I command you to open in the name of Jesus. I took my hands off and what do you think happened? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm like, can you see a tiny bit better? No. Is there any difference? No. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. See, but my point was this. My point was obedience to what God had asked me to do. Also, as evangelists, we do not miss opportunities ever, even if it does not look good. I said, well, listen, can I at least tell you about my Jesus? And they said, we don't believe in Jesus. We believe in, and they gave me a name of another faith. I said, well, let me tell you anyway, since things are going so good. <laughs> like we're clearly having such a good time. Let's just keep going. And so I began to share the gospel. The woman was raging. She was not happy. But I kept sharing. I kept sharing. I began to tell him about a, a God who so loved them, he sent his only son. I told him that if you were the only ones, he would have still sent his son to bleed and die on that cross because he loves you with an everlasting love. I told him that without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. And this beautiful Jesus came and shed his blood that was innocent and pure because ours was full of guilt and sin. And I look up, and there are tears running down the woman's cheeks. And at the very end, I said, listen, would you like to give your life to this Jesus? And they both said, yes, we would. And so right there, in the middle of Epcot, I led them to Jesus. My wife took their details. We sent them a Bible. And friend, I say all of this to say this to you. We have been called to live a life of great faith. You say, well, Jordan, what about the fact that God didn't open his eyes? Then I'll pray for the next blind person. And I'll pray for the next blind person. And I'll pray for the next one. Because my instruction was clear. Lay hands on the sick. And that is my command, friend. If you will just take this Bible and begin to believe what God said, then friend, you will begin to live a life of the super natural and friend in the last few years alone I've seen God raise dead people I've seen cripples walk I've seen blind eyes open and deaf ears this is the life God has chosen for every single person who will simply believe the Bible says